doing an overview, a review of this Tascam Model 24. Now a lot of the functions on here are relevant for the Model 16 and also the Model 12. Now the first thing you want to know is it any good? Can you get any good sounds out of it? Can you produce a good recording on it? Well here's a little bit of what I've done with my band and then we'll start having a look at the desk. Join them. Well can it said the virus begin? But who knows what they knew? President Trump was there in silver underwear, blaming everyone he knew. So that's a clip from the song we've just recorded. I'll put the link into the description if you want to see the rest. Now let's talk about this desk. I've been really pleased with it. I upgraded from the DP24SD, which I've always been really pleased with. And in all fairness, I do think that this desk does have some limitations compared to that. And I have done a short video on that, and some people have commented about that. But the thing is, people have asked, what does this desk do and what doesn't this desk do? Now I've had more opportunity to use it, I'm going to tell you some of the limitations and some of the plus sides to it. The desk has 17 channels. Channels. The first 12 are mono, the last five are stereo, and the very last of them stereo channels is actually a Bluetooth channel, which works really, really well for importing your music or sound effects or whatever it is you want to import into your desk. You can't actually export from the Bluetooth, which I think is a disadvantage. That would have been so good, and it just doesn't work in that sense. Also on the Bluetooth channel, they haven't put the graphic equalizer. And here, this is the sound effects, uh, so that's been left off too. But what I've been doing is bouncing it from here on onto another channel so whatever I bring in then it has got the graphic and it has got the sound effect it just works as any other channel then. Starting at the top of the desk you've got the standard microphone jacks on every channel. There is a phantom power here for the mic inputs if you need to use phantom power. That's the standard guitar jack. On the first four stereo channels you have two inputs left and right or you can just use it as a mono and that goes from channels 13 up to channels 20. Now on the Bluetooth channel, you have a left and right RCA input and you also have a small stereo input there that you can use to connect to your CD player or other external devices. Coming down the desk, you've got a gain and then you come to a compression. Now the gain goes right across for all channels, but when it comes to the compression, you've only got it on the mono channels and it doesn't continue onto the stereo channel or the Bluetooth channel. Now something else you'll notice, if you look at the graphic, when it actually goes on the mono channels, you've got four options to alter the sound. But when you come to the stereo, not only have they missed off the compression, but they've reduced that graphic then to three options on the sound. So that's reduced as well. Now the thing I like about this desk from the desk I was using before, it's more hands-on. You can actually, for every single channel, it's far easier to change the graphic and the compression. And then you come down to the effect, and then you come to a pan, and then you come to record. And these buttons here work really, really nicely. You've only got to touch them and they work just so well. They feel quality, there's resistance with them, and they are, they are quality. Same with the sliders, they feel quality too. Now at the very bottom here, you've got these switches here, and these are for the outputs. You've got a main to go to the main output, a sub to go to the sub outputs, or a PFL, which is a pre-fade listen. Now that's quite handy, say if you're a DJ or something and you want to check the volumes, by pressing the PFL, that will isolate the track to the headphones and also to the control room speakers. The rest of the music will continue going out the main outputs, but that will be isolated, so that's all you will hear, so you can set the level for that. So that's quite nice if you're doing things like that. I have used it a little bit, just experimenting with my original music. So you've got a main fader, two monitor faders, and a sub fader here. You've got the sound effects here, you've got the pre fade listen and the after fade listen master here, control room outs, and the headphone volume here. This here works for the sound effects, and this is the master for the sound effects. To select the sound effects, you can press this, and that will take you into the screen. And you can change there the ones you want to use. So at the moment it's on seven, and here you can see live or studio or plate, and you can change them by altering the jog wheel here and you can scroll through and that will alter the sound effects. Now the sound effects do work along each channel but whatever effect you've used it works on all the channels. You can't have a room here and a plate here and reverb here. It doesn't work like that. You get one effect across all the channels but it, they do work nicely and it is a nice effect and I do use them a little bit. The other thing that I have found is that the effects only come out of certain channels. Say for the sub it won't have the effects on. Uh, some of them won't have the graphics on. Here is the mute for the effects so you can turn them on and off easily and that will turn them on and off for all the channels. This is for the little SD card. Basically you just flick the case up, click it down 
and the SD card comes out and you need to put the SD card with the chip facing up and then you just slot it back in and it just clicks into place. It's easy to put in there. It's easy to format as well. I have done videos on formatting. The only thing I found with the desk is I was going to go for the model 16 and I didn't think it was big enough so I went for the model 24 because I thought I'd have more channels because I like to experiment with my music. Sometimes it'd be very basic and the model 12 would have been enough with enough channels because I just put a drum in and a rhythm in and a bit of vocal but sometimes I like to put everything in and really really push the desk and put backing vocals in and rhythm guitar lead guitar or a bit of keyboards or whatever it is and the more you start using up these channels I do find it starts to crash a lot I have tried different SD cards and it's not that the SD cards I am using are quality and I know someone else that's got the desk as well and they're having similar problems with it so it's not just me and also some people have written to me and said that they're having similar problems with it crashing so it does happen but I did find it occasionally with the DP24 SD that that would crash but with this one sometimes it literally freezes up and I've lost the work having said that the other day I was working on this it crashed and it froze so I had to turn it off and I thought I've lost my work but when I actually checked back and replayed it it had recorded what I wanted to do so it's always worth checking to see if the, the work is still there there is a little graphic here and again this will come out your main um, it doesn't come out of all the channels again but it's a nice little graphic and it is a little extra there but it doesn't come out the sub which I, I use for recording because what I do I record in and then I send out of the sub here into my iPad and that's the way I do it there is a USB connection on the back so you can connect it directly to your computer if you want to so for the out you can do the USB and then for the input the Bluetooth is the easiest way to go the desk has a screen here but I do find this screen is quite difficult to see you really have to look at it dead on to see what it is it's a very small screen it's not the best now recording on this desk it does say in the manual if you've got your guitar coming in here so you need to have it on live and then the input from here you come down put your track on live and then when you press record it starts recording whatever's coming in now I have found if I have forgotten this it still does record but what you're supposed to do is record there when you finish recording if you play back you can't hear anything so then you need to come to this MTR come over to here and then it will actually start reading off your SD card whatever you've recorded it'll play back to be fair the sound quality is nice but I do find it a little bit tinny when you place the mode onto the PC that goes to the USB so then you can use the USB on the back of the uh, Tascam to connect it to your computer or Apple or whatever device you're using. Now if we look at the main buttons record button here you've got the play and the pause the stop you've got a forward fast a rewind and then you've got a button here to go into the menu when you turn the actual task cam on you come into here which is like a monitor screen for each channel you can go through and here you can swap them from the 1 to 8 and then 9 to 16 17 to 22 and the main so you can see how high the levels are if you press the menu you come out of there then and then you can see the actual time of the track and how you're doing here you've got a repeat and if you'll see in the left hand corner you'll get an S1 which means it'll just go around once or if you do that it'll just continually go around the track and loop around and continually play here they've got the FX button there so you press into that that's to mute the effect there or take the effect back on if you press the menu button then you get the list so you've got song and if you use the jog wheel you can come up and down on them so you've got the track clear the auto punch in and out there's the import and stereo mix and SD play storage so go down there and if you press it again into the system say you get some other options there there's also a foot switch option there there is a foot switch here and I do have the foot switch for the actual unit which works really really well I'll put links in the description for all the different tutorials I've done for the desk anyway and, and I have done tutorials on the foot switches so if you want to know about the foot switch just have a look in the description and I'll put the links there so to come out of the system you just press the menu uh, a menu again and you're back to the home screen so when you're using the pre fade listen or the after fade listen on there that will light up so I've just pressed the pre fade there and it'll light up there. Now these are all the outputs on the desk. The only other output is the USB on the back, all the rest are on the front here. The on and off switch is actually on the back as well, but beyond that, the here, so you've got your headphones, you've got your control room, and this here, the one that's lit up in black, for the PFL, the pre-fade listen, this is what it isolates to. You've got your foot switch, you've got an effects, 
you've got a monitor one and two and you've got the monitor one two faders down below and then you've got the sub and you've got the sub fade down below and then you've got the main output here and you've got the main fade down below as well so they're all your outputs